Hallelujah. Indeed, this is the day that the Lord has made and will be glad in it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Once again, may I take recognizance of our family in various media platforms where you are hearing us from. May I say happy Palm Sunday. Thank you, Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. And unto us all who are gathered in the house of the Lord, once again I say happy Palm Sunday. Thank you. Because of time, I won't waste much of your time. We've got a service of deliverance ahead of us. Say thank you, Jesus, for your grace, your mercy, your favor upon my life. I'm in your presence. Give me the grace to remain in your presence by your spirit and by your word in Jesus name you may be seated thank you thank you Jesus once again happy Palm Sunday shall we open our Bibles without wasting much of your time we are reading from the book of Matthew we are reading from the book of Matthew, chapter 21. I would have loved to start reading from the very first verse. But in your own time, you can read from verse 1 all the way up to verse 16. But for now, I'll just read from verse 9 up to where the Lord will guide us. The crowd that went ahead of him followed him and shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up and asked, Who is this? The response from the crowd was that this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Jesus entered the temple, verse 12, and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of money changers and the benches of those who were selling doves. It is written, he said unto them, My house shall be called a house of prayer. But you are making it a den of robbers. Verse 14. The blind and the lame came to him at the temple and he healed them all. But when the chief priests and the teachers of the law saw, that, saw the wonderful things that he did and the children shouting in the temple courts, Hosanna! And to the son of David, they were indignant or they were furious. I've entitled, by the grace of God, today's message, The Purpose of Palm Sunday. Today, believers, if we go out there, those of us that were coming using various modes of transports you would have noticed that there were people that were going around marrying rejoicing 
ceremonially caught my words clearly ceremonially they were rejoicing ceremonially not that what they were doing was coming from the bottom of their hearts already others have already made uh, groups when after this celebration we are going to this particular place where we are going to marry, drink at a time such as this we have devalued the purpose of this day and the sad thing is that the people that are doing these things that are marrying wrongly it is the people who are called believers I want to awale sansa muka kunse kudya no kune umwangashi no kulungana bantu awale bena kristo once again i'm saying we have devalued the purpose of palm sunday what is the purpose of palm sunday the sole purpose of jesus christ entering jerusalem triumphantly was not a ceremonial occasion it was not something that was done to bring or to bring anger to the pharisees the sadducees the teachers of the law it was prophetic the entering on into jerusalem by jesus christ was a solution unto mankind but the sad thing today when we are is that we celebrate ne mentioned but if you let it take up here you know to apa ukusefia if you come kapo bambini mfwa bambini eloni ine they are they, they are transmitting hiv into their bodies bambini eloni ine they are going to get involved in accidents and yet it is a day of reflection it is not a mere day it is a day of what reflection for you as a believer it is not a time to marry anyhow it is a time to reflect what was the purpose of jesus christ entering into jerusalem it was to bring salvation to mankind and we are seeing this the bible says in the book of matthew 21 verse uh we start from verse 9 it says the crowd were shouting hosanna hosanna unto the son of david he who has come in the name of the lord jesus christ did not come in any other name he came in the name of the father he came to bring solution to you and me but cha bulanda to alisendo bubushiko ukubafya ngobushiko uba kusangalala baminga to afumana muno to alaba na munchende shimo eso tatufiri okubamo but we are looking forward to the day of, 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 of the coming of Christ will be surprised that will be the ones whom the Bible will say away from me you workers of iniquity why because of the lives that we are leading the word of God is life unto you and me and whatever that is written in the book of life it is a solution unto our lives to ibelenga lafi okutila yesu christo alingile mu jerusalem let us understand that his coming into jerusalem was to bring salvation unto mankind i'll prove this to you jerusalem is a family it is not the war 
Jerusalem is what? The family. If you go to Jerusalem today, you will notice that the East Gate, which was prophetic according to Zechariah, today that place is closed. Why? They are opposing the coming of Christ into where? Into Jerusalem. But they were late. Because it was prophetic for the Son of Man to enter through the East Gate for the sake of your deliverance. For the sake of your breakthrough. He came through that gate that you and I today may have the authority to stand and declare that I am not a failure. He came through that gate that you today, you may be disconnected from the powers of darkness. He came through that gate so that you and me today we may be free from every form of infirmity. It was not ceremonial. It was not a, a game of chances. Jesus Christ was not guessing. It all started far back. If you read in Zechariah 9, you understand where I'm coming from. It was something that was prophetic. Zechariah 9, verse 9 to 25. In your own time, go and find out why this day is so significant to a true believer. It is for your breakthrough. The men of God, the saints of God, they were saying, Osana, Osana, and yet the Pharisees that carried the Pentateuch the word of God on their forehead. They were upset. Who is this man? That he should come in our midst. He was bringing solution. Ah, are we not just reading from the scripture? That the lame came to him. Blind came to him. And they were delivered. And yet. The same Bible is saying. The teachers of the law. Were up in arms with Jesus Christ. Because of time, let me jump to this uh, particular scripture, uh, a particular uh, scripture, Matthew tw 21, verse 12. The Bible says, sense of God, that you are the temple of God. What is in you would determine the meaning of this day. He came to drive out prophetically. It was, we, we saw those things that were being done there physically. But the temple, the representation of the temple is your body. He has come today to cleanse your body. He has come today to restore you to your true destiny. The destiny that our father is talking about today. He has come to restore it by driving out diseases, by driving out poverty, by driving out the shame that has followed you all the days of your life. He drove away the doves, the money changers, so that the temple may be cleansed. Tell your neighbor, I am the temple of the Lord. I shall not allow anything that is contrary to the word of God to have reference in me, to have control of my destiny. If we are going to allow this day to pass us by, I'm afraid, then the purpose of the message that our Father has been preaching, restoration, will have no meaning. The Bible says in verse 12, that he came and drove away. He said, my hand, the, the house of my father shall be called what? The house of prayer. 
ask your neighbor are you a house of prayer if these things if prayer has no meaning to you has no meaning to me i can assure you our destinies are questionable tu ibo cha abantu abale sefia fie leo tu be abantu abale fikirisha ifia le mboa abale ikala ngefiwe chebo chile sosa he came to bring solution to mankind he came that he may restore you there are so many things we bana bakwalesa that we have in our hearts even when we enter the house of god hatred is in us we enter the house of god promiscuity is in us we enter the house of god drunkenness is our neighbor and if all these vices have found refuge in our hearts in the temple of the lord then there is a challenge before us he came to bring solution to you and me these lives that we are leading they are not original lives earlier are to bear satana ali chita corrupt life ya muntu mune mune fo tufulanga kwa bati oh kulia menga time yaku ila bale pala bashima pepo bale pala na winga na shwinga impendwa ya bantu iba mu inono but go to the reception if this body we permit it to fulfill the desires eo ile fire uyu mubido ule fire i'm telling you we will fall in the ditch on that day we will be called the workers of iniquity why because we have succumbed to the flesh he is come today to cleanse you he has come today to restore you to your true destiny hence our father is given us a powerful message it is a year of restoration and restoration shall come when our hearts the spirit man in us is filled with the word is living a purposeful life a meaningful life so the purpose of palm sunday it is not a ceremonial activity it is a time of reflection over your own life ushende ikala shani usho mwina kristu wandi kuli shani usho kwenda kwandi ulendo lwandi lwa mwina kristu kuli shani why because we do not know what tomorrow holds for us i may be standing here and preaching the word the next minute i'll be in the coffin it is a day of sober reflection it is not a day to go out there and marry anyhow it is a day to seek the presence of god to seek the guidance of the holy spirit to allow the presence of god to take control of our lives and seek and ask god god restore me back to whom you desire me to be The Bible is clear. He drove out things that were not supposed to be done in the house of God, the temple. The same Bible is saying your heart is the temple of the Holy Ghost. I pray that as we reflect on this word 
we reflect on it with a sober mind. Remember that in this book, Matthew 21, verse 12, it is talking about you. You are the temple. Don't take it that early time. Today is come to chase those things that have held you captive. It is not right. Spiritually. I'm in the same state. Come the other month, it is like the enemy is adding more to our lives than God is doing upon our lives. Why? Life to lay color. The lives that we are leading are not right before God. That's why God seemed to be distant from us. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. God bless you.